Shade Fire, Bade Fire. Hello world, it's your boy Figgy McKnight of Hebrew Music, singer, songwriter, producer, recording engineer. Uh, I'm doing a lot of big things right now, so I'm trying to I'm trying to brand everything together, put everything back together as far as knowing who I am. So you know, this is pretty much my story right here. Well, I started off as um a, a poet, like like anybody, any rapper really. Um, you know, I started off rapping, but I, I used to write a lot of poems, little love letters to girls in, in high school and stuff like that. You know, that little yes or no question. <laughs> so I used to do things like that, and um, I, got, I just got better at it. I started off with uh, music using a, um, a PlayStation, the MTV Music Generator, and um, I started making beats from there. I started doing beats from there. I started writing songs to the tracks I was doing on a, um, on a video. It was a video game on a PlayStation, and um, started making tracks from there. And from there, I went from rapping to, um, to singing. I know my favorite music was more like that pop culture, so I'm, I, I was more of a Phil Collins kind of guy, even though I don't look like it. I was more of a Phil Collins kind of guy. I like his music, so anything around that kind of music, and um, I was just feel my, my style off of that. I work with a lot of local acts, as far as Grimo, Briscoe, the Grimo Project was a, the I'm So High record. Um, everybody know I recorded that record. I was, you know, I was with that group. And um, I done did something with Billy Blue. I'd be in a studio with a lot of different artists. And um, we, just, we just try to get it popping. We try to get it going. And I'm really heavy into pop. In fact, almost every record I did that's pop landed on MTV, VH1, E, Oxygen. I done had a few records playing on there. The Kim and Kardashian show. Uh, Kim and Courtney takes New York. A real world, probably like five different real world shows. Cancun and as you know, you know this music business got a lot of ups and downs. It um it pick up and slow down and all that other stuff. So what I did, I, I made a deal with myself. If I send a record out to a record label and I'll VP anybody and they don't respond. I take my track and remake it, and um, make it better, and send it somewhere else. And with that Investor record, that's exactly what happened. I got this record, um, Investor, currently on the Ice Tea Love Coco's show. Um, you probably heard it by now. The way I came up with the record, uh, the purpose of that record really was for that club atmosphere, just to give a girl a compliment about about her looks, about her dancing. You know, because women nowadays they could buy their own drink, but. It's just something about when a guy says, let me buy you a drink, that's, a, that's more of a compliment. And um, that's the picture I wanted to paint with that record. And um, it allowed me to go to New York off of that. I, I took a trip to New York. I took the family with me because, you know, we homeschool the kids. I wanted them to see the old boy do his thing. I am Florida's Finest.com. That's my boy Uzi. He hooked me up with a manager, Jeter. And um, it was weird because this day I was quitting music. This, this, I was quitting music. I was giving up on music. I was leaving music alone. Even though it sounded like, you know, man, Figgy had a lot of success, it's still a lot of stress. And I didn't know if the stress matched the success. I didn't know if I wanted to continue on with the stress factor. So I was getting ready to give it up. And on um, that day, I prayed the whole day. I didn't even eat. And then later on that day, I got a call from Jeter. You just say, Fig, you got a you got an R&B record, and it's funny because I don't know, I don't do R&B records. I do pop records, a lot of pop records, and I only have one R&B record. And um, you say, Fig, you got an R&B record, boy, I got to connect. Everything looking good, man. Um, if I send this and they like it, boy, they they actually might go with your record if it's hot. Send it to me, let me see. I say, boy, you only got one record. Send them that record. 15 minutes later, Fig, it's hot. I'm gonna send it to him. We're gonna let you know something by the end of the week. And by the end of the week, I was getting good news. Like, it, everything changed. And you know? two weeks later, I'm out of town. I'm driving on the road. My wife had to graduate. We were going to Ohio. We're jumping on the road, we ride. And I'm still thinking about this music thing in the back of my head. Because even though I got that call and it all sound good, you know how this music is. It's hurry up and wait. Everybody seems so excited. And then you hear nothing. So. We got to Ohio. I got a phone call while we was in Ohio. So we done drove from Ohio, from Miami, to Ohio. Then I had to drive from Ohio to New York. 
And then you gotta think, I've never been on none of those places. I've barely been out of Florida for twice. My wife graduated and the next day, we on the road to New York. And um, we got to the studio. I meet Zayin and um, the rest of his camp. Shouts out to Mickey Benson. Shouts out to Khalil. And I just really appreciate the love they showed me there at the studio. It was a nice studio. They allowed me to engineer the session. They allowed me to record um, and work with Zayim and everything. They gave me full access to everything. They ain't blocked me from nothing. They allowed me to get my creative skills on. Now, I, ref I referenced the song first, so they had to hear me sing it and all that other stuff. So on the way back to Ohio, my wife sleeping. She wake up and she say, Man, you sound better today. <laughs> I said, no, that's... That's Zayim, that's, that's the artist, man. Well, that opportunity really opened up a door to work with uh, Shannon McGrain from American Idol and I'm uh, working on something for AI from Japan. That's a real big situation because of this this door opening. Shouts out to Jita and uh, shouts out to Ellie for making that happen. As a kid, when I was growing up, um, my daddy wasn't around and um, I never really got to see this, that side of the family a lot. And as I got older, I knew that, I, I found out that my granddaddy was actually a part of a group and um, he was pretty, doing pretty good, um, Paul Moss. So uh, my granddaddy was, was booming. And it's funny, because I was in the music. By, by the time I actually knew that he was actually in the music, he played the piano and he sang. So I wish I would have known all that. You know, like grew up with it so somebody could teach me. So what I did instead of complaining about it and you know talking about the past because you can't bring the past back, I put that into my kids now. So like Lil Fig, Nana, -na, Shia, Poppy, Marley, and then I know it sounds crazy, but I got a lot of them, a lot of kids. And um, but I'm teaching them all how to do music. Just as if, at the same time I'm learning. So I, I let them run the Pro Tools. I let them um play the piano. Actually, they actually only got their um, they got their own setup really. Their own microphone, their own speakers, their own Pro Tools, own computer. I let them do that. And um, I didn't do that when I became rich or anything like that. I did that when I ain't had nothing. I, I, I bought that with my last. So I can show them how much, you know, it's important, how, how important it is to really get this music thing going or, or just have something to do other than watching TV or playing video games all day. That's what they do. They play the piano. They um, use the Pro Tools, they record themselves. They're learning how to write hooks now. And um, they're getting into that real good and they're doing pretty good, really. Make sure you go to your favorite social network and look up Figgy McKnight. I'm on all of them. Anyone you can think of them there. Just Google me if you have to. FiggyMcKnight.com, just Figgy McKnight, you're gonna find me. I'm always behind the scenes, but I'm everywhere. So I want y'all to go ahead and um, support your boy. And if anything i'm trying to support you too because i'm you know y'all know i'm family oriented so i'm trying to build a whole entourage off this one thing if i can help anybody else that's my that's what i'm here for